Hello guys, recently I attended TCS interview for the profile of a React.js developer and today I'm going to share with you all the questions that were asked from me in this interview. So there were three rounds guys, one was technical, then managerial and HR round. In most of the companies, the, uh, most of the companies follows the same process. There could be one or two or multiple technical rounds depending on the companies. And then there is a managerial round and then there is a final HR round. Okay, so let's start with the questions. The first round was the technical round. In the technical round, the first question was what is React.js? And guys, this question is the most awaited one and you can predict this question that this will be asked from you. It does not matter what is your experience in which company you are applying. So of course, if you are giving a React.js interview, then you can expect that this question will be asked from you. So prepare it well in advance so that you can uh, answer this question pretty well. Okay, the next question was uh, the difference between lifecycle methods and hooks. So guys, as you know, in the React uh, latest versions, uh, hooks have been introduced, right? So in most of the interviews or most of the interviewers uh, like to ask the difference between lifecycle methods and hooks because previously lifecycle methods were used, but now it's a standard to, uh, I, I, won't say it's, I won't say it is a standard, but uh, like this is a latest feature of uh, React uh, latest versions so it's now recommended to use hooks now right so uh, he asked me this question and there were more uh, supporting questions like when, when when I explained the lifecycle methods and hooks then he asked me uh, to differentiate a couple of hooks and uh, the lifecycle methods as well right like what is the difference between component did update and component did mount and from the hooks it was like uh, how can you use use effect hook in different ways so like as you know we can pass an empty array right or some dependency inside the array those kind of stuff he asked me so the conversation went on the third question was what is unidirectional data flow in react.js so by unidirectional uh, it means that we can pass the data uh, only from top to bottom in react.js uh, of course there are some uh, workaround where you can pass the data from child to parent as well but the question was uh, what is Unidirectional data flow in React.js, so you you can prepare it well. And guys, one more thing, additional thing I want to tell you about TCS that uh, as you know, most of the companies are laying off like Google, Facebook, right? Everything, uh, I mean, every every company is uh, laying off, right? But TCS is one of the companies which is not uh, laying off any employee. Instead, you can see uh, this is I just copied from a news website. The the TCS will instead give a raise to its workforce, and it's also planning to hire impacted employees from startups. So that's a good move from TCS. Okay, now let's move to the next question. The fourth one was what is React Memo, and uh, he asked me to write an example of it. So my screen was shared, and I just written a code for it uh, using code sandbox. I like to use that. So I just explained uh, what is React Memo and how it actually works and what are the benefits of using it. Okay, the next question is what is HOC, which stands for higher order component. And he asked me any use case or uh, any example when or in, in any project where I have used it. So I just explained what is higher order component and I just, uh, you know, uh, it, it was not a coding question. He just wanted to me to explain it so i just did that okay the next question was what is mounting so i just explained it and uh, additionally when i explained mounting he was uh, also wanted to know uh, what is rendering and then he asked me what is the difference between mounting and rendering so i have seen in most of the interviews people uh, the interviewer ask either mounting or rendering so uh, you can expect this question in your interview as well the seventh question is how to optimize react application any example so he just asked a very open question because there are so many techniques to optimize a React application. I just gave a few examples like pagination, right? Infinite scroll, we can do caching, we can do these kind of things uh, I've told him. So he was satisfied. And uh, there are a lot more techniques to optimize React applications. So you can go through them. Uh, at least you should know three to four techniques so that uh, you can impress the interviewer, right? And uh, if possible, then 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 try to uh, keep an example ready uh, for these techniques. So that that will help you in 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 your interview if the interviewer asks you to write the code. 
The next question was how to pass the data from child to parent. This is a very common question in interview. So you can uh, expect this one in your interview as well. But uh, how we can pass data from child to parent, there are multiple ways to do it. Like callback is there. That is one of the most uh, common, commonly used uh, way of passing data from child to parent. So you can just uh, prepare it well and keep ready an example of how to pass the data from child to parent. The next question was, what are different ways to call APIs in React? Right. So in any, in any application, of course, uh, we need to call the APIs and there are uh, multiple ways to call the APIs like fetch is there, Axios is there, and there are so many other uh, packages or tools are there with which you can call the APIs. So just uh, and you should know at least two, three uh, of the ways. So uh, I, I like to use Axios. So I just told him about two, three ways of calling the APIs in React. And then I explained about Axios and why it is better than other one. So now the 10th question was, what is a React context API? So if you are carrying uh, experience more than you know 1.5 years or, or more than two years, then uh, interviewer would expect you to know uh, React context API because it is used a lot. And I also explained him like the concept of uh, you know provider and consumer, all that. The eleventh question was, what are new features of React latest version? So guys, here is the question which checks whether you are up to date or not. So before going to any interview, just uh, you know go through the latest versions of the technologies you are using, and just uh, go through the features uh, which are offered in the latest versions of uh, the technology you are going the uh, for the interview of, right? So that uh, it will give the interview an impression that you are up to date. Right. The next question, the twelfth question was, what is Redux and how it works? This is a very common question because uh, in most of the application you would see Redux is used unless you are using the context API or some other, uh, you know, alternative of Redux. So you can expect in most of the interviews that uh, they would ask either Redux or like uh, a very general question: how state is managed at the global level, right? Uh, at the application level, I mean. So those kind of things you can expect. And in Redux, uh, of course, uh, it's working uh, revolves around actions and resolvers, right? So those kind of things you can expect in the interview for around Redux. The 13th question was, what are middlewares? So this is again uh, related to Redux, right? So you should know uh, how middle, middleware works and what happens if there are no middlewares. That is also a good question. And it will also, uh, you know, clear your all your doubts and everything uh, regarding middlewares. That if middlewares are not there, if you know this thing, then you actually know what middleware does. The fourteenth question is Redux Tank versus Saga. So these are different tools which uh, does almost the same things, but uh, there are some use cases where Redux Tank is better and some use cases where Saga is better. So if you you have used uh, both, then you can differentiate them. Otherwise, you can explain that you can say that no, I have used only this one. So it totally depends on the uh, you know project demands. So I have worked on some projects where Redis Tank was used, and in some projects where Saga was used. So I was able to uh, differentiate both of them. The next question was, uh, what are promises in JavaScript? So that is a question which is asked in lots of the interviews. Uh, what are promises in JavaScript? And when I explained about the promises, then uh, he suddenly asked me, what is callback hell in JavaScript? And then uh, additionally, the conversation went on and we also discussed what is async await, like the entire thing of async await, callback, promises. It was around four to five minute discussion around these three things, right? So I suggest you to prepare well around these uh, topics because these are very common topics in any JavaScript interview, right? The next question was explain some features of uh, ECMAScript 6 or ES6. So there are so many things like let const uh, keywords are there, right? Arrow functions are there, and there are so many more things which ES6 brings to the table. So just uh, you should at least know four to five things which uh, are the new or the latest things in ES6. And you should also know some examples. Uh, by examples, I mean the coding examples. So just keep the examples ready so that you can quickly write uh, in the interview and you can impress the interviewer. The next round was managerial round after the technical round. And in the managerial round, uh, the first question was like there were, uh, uh, it was around 10 to 15 minutes of discussion. 
and uh, i mean for the old managerial round the first question was tell me about yourself and your previous projects and the technology you have used so i just wanted to you know uh, just wanted to know about myself and uh, the projects i have worked on the technologies so that he can ask more questions from them and he can check whether i have a matching profile with their project or not this those kind of stuff the, the, that was the intention of the manager i feel the next question was how was the work allocated in your team among developers so we just wanted to you know kind of get the insight that how in what kind of environment in what kind of culture i have worked on how was my team the team size did we follow agile or not right how was the estimation done these these kind of th things he was interested in so i explained him whatever i knew and he was quite impressed the final round was the hr round and in hr rounds these are the uh, common and the standard things like you discuss about the compensation or if you have some doubts about uh, the joining process or the you want to know about the company culture the leaves policy or some other policies insurance policy etc etc et so those kind of things are discussed in the hr round right so this uh, was my experience uh, in the tcs react interview i hope you guys have liked it and if you have learned something new please uh, like share and subscribe to my channel